Whether you're looking to get your first nano tank or your 21st nano tank, this video is for you because I have seven questions you should ask yourself before getting a nano tank. Welcome to the Smallscape. I'm Joanna. This is your home for all things nano tanks and aquatic plants, all the good stuff in the aquarium world. And I have kept a variety of nano tank sizes throughout the years, anywhere as small as a quarter of a gallon, yes, 0.25 gallon, little bitty tiny tank, to the maximum nano size, which is a couple back here, the 20 gallon long. And generally accepted, uh, I would say most people just say that the 20 gallon long is the maximum nano tank size. So I'm hoping that this video helps you out some questions you should ask yourself. And let's just, uh, let's just get started. All right, the first couple questions, I think I'm gonna start with some of the less, less common kind of thoughts that you're gonna have when you're looking for a nano tank. The first one is, I think it's very important to ask yourself before you buy a nano tank, where are you gonna put it? You should definitely know where you are gonna put this nano tank so that it fits where you wanna put it, not only size-wise, but the piece of furniture that you're gonna be putting it onto, can it hold the weight? It's about eight pounds per gallon of water, so any, like a five gallon tank is 40, 40 pounds, plus any decorations. If you're putting rocks in there, they can be very heavy, so I kinda look at ballpark it, 10 pounds per gallon will get you a, a good uh, starting point for how much that tank is gonna weigh. So a 20 gallon tank, yeah, 200 pounds. So when I buy furniture, I really like Wayfair, if you, if you buy any of your furniture online, because one of the things that they list for nearly every single piece of furniture is the weight capacity. And when you bring in any furniture in this house, you wanna know, can it hold a fish tank? So even if you're gonna be putting a little tank next to your desk, you might wanna check out, can that desk hold that weight? The other thing you wanna think about is, where are you gonna be putting it? Is it at a level where you can sit and enjoy it? Generally speaking, you're not gonna be standing appreciating your tank. You're gonna be sitting down, like here. I've made a, a few mistakes throughout the years, uh, one of which is when we set up the nano, the nano nook here, it used to be a nano wall, and when you get your first shelving racks, you're gonna wanna, you're gonna wanna stack them, get as many nano tanks on there as you possibly can. It's a sickness, I know, but I learned the hard way. I don't like tanks on the floor. You can't appreciate them, and I don't get up and down real easy. I'm not, uh, you know, as young as I used to be, so it's not very fun for me to sit on the floor and appreciate my tanks. So I like them, even, even the ones down here, they're, they're kind of pushing it. But consider, are you gonna be able to sit and appreciate it? Is it by a couch? Is it where you normally hang out? Which leads me to the, the, uh, another point is, is it in a room that you usually occupy? If you're not into uh, basements, we are in a basement, and if you don't like going down into the basement, I wouldn't suggest putting any fish tanks down there because they will probably wind up being neglected or you just won't be able to fully enjoy them. My favorite tanks that I have are where I work, my co coworker, Bob Beta, I see him every single day. We spend time together during the workday. And then also a tank in the kitchen. We have two in the kitchen and I see them all the time. Now, the 15 gallon column tank, I'm gonna bring up some examples of some winners and losers in my life. This is, we did a video on the 15 gallon column tank. It's not for every single fish, not for every situation, but we do actually like it in certain scenarios. We have it in the kitchen and I think it's a great height. You can see it when you're sitting in the dining room. You can also see it when you're standing. And who isn't in the kitchen? In our house, everybody's always in the kitchen. So it's a great, great uh, size tank, and it's also a great location to have an aquarium in our house. Number two, I think you should definitely consider, before you buy that nano tank, consider the maintenance before buying the nano tank may sound like a funny question because all tanks are, are going to require maintenance. However, what is the ease of maintaining your tank? You will probably be changing the water once a week. So I'm going to bring up the 15 gallon column tank again because it is probably the worst tank to maintain, at least in my opinion. 
and I've got pretty long arms, but it is very difficult to get to the bottom of that tank if you have to, say you have to get out a dead fish. Say you need to get into the little nooks and crannies right around the rocks and the wood. Maybe you have a dead plant. You have to, a uh, plant came, came off. You need to reattach it. That's going to be a little bit more difficult than if you're looking at a uh, 10 gallon, a 20 gallon that's sitting right on your desk with, with real ease to get to the bottom. Can you reach the bottom? Number three may be obvious to some, but the smaller the tank you get, the faster the water parameters can change and also the dirtier the tank is going to look quicker and the more limited you're going to have uh, for your stocking options for what fish can you can put in there. We have a number of smaller tanks, but I get them knowing that they're very limited for the occupants. We've got some nice little bookshelf tanks, three gallon tanks. I've got, I've had two and a half gallon tanks. And even though, yes, you can, we would always say a two and a half gallon is the minimum size for a betta. Yes, you can put a betta in there, but the more I keep fish, the more I keep bettas. It, it's an appropriate size for a betta, but it's gonna be a little bit boring I think for the fish, also for you to watch the fish because you've got about that much space to watch your fish go back and forth. It's going to be boring for both of you. So the larger the tank, the more uh, activity you're going to see, the more they can interact with their uh, surroundings, and the more options you're going to have in case you want to have different fish in there at some point. Some of the smaller tanks, the one gallons, not appropriate for a betta. We don't recommend that, but you're going to be limited to, say, uh, shrimp, snails, uh, things like that, and, and it's just going to really limit you. Now, the quarter tank, the, the quarter gallon tank that I mentioned, it was super tiny. It was adorable. I love miniatures as much as the next person. I actually love miniatures more than the next person, probably. So I was really attracted to the tiny tanks, the two and a half gallon, because it looks like a 20 gallon just whoop, shrunk. So cute. Do I have them anymore? No, I don't. Jason, my husband, let me get them and work through all the problems and now I'm going into bigger tanks. But the, the 0.25 gallon, the only thing that we could really put in there was micro tie crabs, which are adorable. They are flipaquatics.com. They are a channel sponsor for uh, our other channel, Primetime Aquatics. Definitely check them out because they're little tiny crabs. They're so cute, but not a whole lot of other things you can put in there. Maybe a shrimp or two, a little shrimplet. But like I said, water parameters will change greatly in there. Number four, the next time that you're shopping for a nano tank, ask yourself this. Do you want to see the filter? Do you want to see the heater? There are a lot of tanks that have all of the filtration, all of the mechanics hidden behind panels. And in our studio upstairs, we set up four from Lifeguard Aquatics. They're beautiful tanks and all of the filtration is hidden. I personally find those tanks to maintain the clean look way fat, way like longer than if you were to piece together a bookshelf tank and put in a sponge filter or hang on back and you have a lot of different things sitting in the, uh, the, the main compartment where all the fish are, the plants are, everything else. When you have contraptions going into the, the main compartment, it's going to get a little bit more crowded looking and you're going to see a whole lot more. That means your scape, if you're big into aquascaping like I am, it's, it may mess with your plan, your vision, seeing a big old sponge filter there or hang on back, hanging into the, the middle of your scape or the side. It may be a detraction for, for it. It may not. You may not care about it at all, but just keep that in mind. Do you want to see it? Number five, before you buy that nano tank, look, look for the crevices. That's right, the crevices. Because anything inside that tank, you are going to want to clean because it, it will attract algae, detritus, all that stuff that you are not going to want to see. So you're going to want to clean the glass. You're going to want to clean the sides, the back, all that stuff. So any kind of crevice will have hard water stains, you know, all these duckweed, dried duckweeds, my favorite. But if you have, say, the bookshelf tanks, we've got a number of three gallon bookshelf tanks. They're adorable, really cute, uh, nice, kind of seamless. You don't have the black silicone lines. However, you're gonna need a clip-on light. 
that's going to clip on unless of course you decide to get something that sits behind the tank and hangs over it which I would actually recommend but if you clip it on guess what that clip that is hanging inside your tank that's right it's going to attract stuff so you're going to actually have to take that off and clean that too so just keep that in mind and then also the sides the corners of the tank you cannot get a razor blade if you that's how you clean like even a plastic razor blade i recommend those uh you can't really get into that crevice so you're gonna have to consider how are you going to clean the corners of the tank even the ones that are rounded you can't you have to be really careful so you don't scratch those but just keep that in mind you have to know how you're going to clean those crevices now number six is kind of a given before you buy that nano tank do your research what fish are you going to be putting it in there do you are you getting this this tank for say a betta then you need to know the the behaviors of the betta what are the requirements of the betta and their schooling behaviors so a tank that that's meant for a betta may be a totally different tank that you're looking at than a, say a tank for a school of green neons so i have a 20 gallon long for my band of green neons because they school back and forth. They're swimming, they have a lot of activity. So would I wanna put them in a small cube tank? No, because they really wouldn't enjoy it and, and they would really just prefer a lot of vertical space. The betta, you would wanna consider the betta goes to the top. They have a labyrinth organ, they have to go to the top to get air and they do that very frequently. So betta generally is not kept in any kind of a tall, uh, aquarium you're going to want to make sure he has a lot of vertical space and he's always or she is close to the top and also while well, that goes for scaping too make sure that they have lots of cover and you just do your research on the particular fish that you're going to get and number seven the last one is well a lot of these points that i'm bringing up are due to my own mistakes so i am sharing all of my fails and some successes but mostly fails this one is is there are you getting this nano tank because there is an aquascape that you just have to have maybe you have the driftwood you have the plant you have a picture you have a pinterest picture you have a inspiration picture where you're like that's the scape i'm going to do i'm going to do this scape make sure that that's going to fit in the aquarium that you get i don't recommend eyeballing it i've done that before and it didn't work. The driftwood that I was planning didn't fit in there. And if you're looking at a nano tank that's all kind of like an all-in-one, I love some of those tanks. They're really beautiful, but they have an attached light that goes, it's an, a fixed light, kind of like some of the ones, uh, that one back there. Uh, the driftwood might not fit in there. Just keep that in mind, because uh, you'll be very frustrated and maybe you'll have to change your scape, you'll have to get other driftwood and it'll just go horribly wrong. But keep in mind, and, and also, this is a good tip for you. If you are looking for something, uh, say you have driftwood and you're going to the store, big box store, and you wanna get an aquarium, just bring it with you. Or if you're buying them at the same time, look around, they always have lots of display tanks. I actually pick it up or I bring it to the store, or if I'm getting it at the store, I take it and I walk around to the same size tank, or at least close enough, and I actually put it into their display tank to make sure that it that it fits and always i always carry a uh, measuring tape with me always very handy when you are an aquascaper and definitely leave me a comment down below especially if we have some beginners here let me know is there a tank either a size or a shape that you would never get again and why why do you not like this tank and then also what is your favorite what is your favorite size shape just share it all and uh share the share the knowledge so hopefully this video was helpful and I will see you in the next one.